Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, my name is Cordant. We are back for some more Pathfinder Kingmaker in Last Aslanti mode. We are in, I believe the name is Trollbolt or Troll Lair. We had just killed Mr. Kargad for Ekundayo's quest. We have some level ups done, but I am just going to advance a little bit in this area. See if I can raise Jubilos level enough so that I can level him up before we have a rest. Because currently our buffs have worn off. But if I could, I would like to, you know, rest after leveling up. We pick up a belt of physical might, so plus two strength and plus two to constitution. It'd be better to not ascertain what or whom this two is made of. Wonderful. Um, now, who am I going to give this to? I could give it to her. Um, could give it to you as well. I think I'll give it to, to Jubilost. Uh, I'm doing this because Valerie, I believe, is already getting buffed with bull strength. Let me just make absolutely sure of what I'm saying here, because I might actually be wrong. Medium duration... <clears throat> and you know what? No. <laughs> even, even for those cases where I'm not actually buffed, I would prefer her to have... You know, the, the better stats here. So yeah, there you go. Uh, now, what else? I don't think I have anything else to wear here. Oh, I do have an amulet of natural armor. Dude, there have been some items that I've been forgetting to, to equip. So you have this one. I'm not very concerned with her because, again, she has... Or she is getting buffed with bark skin. So I could instead give it to my main character, for instance. And she can get protection against range attacks. Sure. <clears throat> Let's leave it like this. Now, we have these doors here as well. They are locked. Let us not Let's try and make sure that we can open them. Or increase our chances, at least. Need a key. Uh, I think I think here there is some kind of check that gets made. So I'm gonna recast my inspire competence after buffing my main character. I'm not sure if he is the one that needs this, but we're gonna find out. A dying dwarf. You see a pile of mutilated bodies reaching nearly to the ceiling. The bodies used to be humans, dwarves, cows, sheep and gods know what else. Some corpses look fresh, others have already started to decompose, filling the passage with a heavy, sickening stench. The trolls probably use this corner as a meat storage. You're ready to pass by, but suddenly you notice some weak movement near the edge of the pile. Having a closer look, you understand one of the corpses is not exactly a corpse yet. A bare-chested dwarf moves his lips silently, staring blindly at the ceiling. His chest has some bite marks left by a huge jaw, and he has no legs. They seem to have been bitten off at the knees. Oh, you poor man. Let us grant the gift of a quick death to this unfortunate soul and take revenge to those monsters who've made him suffer. Ekun pulls an arrow out of the quiver. Mercy, he says, pointing toward the dying dwarf. Let us first examine the dying dwarf. The dwarf definitely looks like he will not make it. He has lost a lot of blood, and his horrible wounds would have killed any other person long ago. The fact that he still clings to life is either a miracle or his own unthinkable stubbornness. Let's be good, let's try and heal him up. We'll try to heal him. Nice. Your healing efforts have an effect of sorts. The dwarf seems to come halfway to life and starts talking in an unknown language. Karadash Kramr du Gadalon. The light around you grows dim all of a sudden, and the floor starts to tremble, resonating with the dwarf's voice. Uzmar Cyril Nadzak. What is that? What's happening? Stop it immediately, you villain. <laughs> You've had all the fun you wanted, I hope. What are you looking at? Finish him off now, before he's done casting. So, I'm guessing he's uh, trying to cast some curse. Somebody do something. <laughs> now, let's try and heal the dwarf again. As soon as your healing kicks in, the dwarf interrupts his monologue, apparently regaining awareness of his surroundings. He moves his head with an immense effort and looks you up and down. You are... not a troll. I thought you were one of them. 
Dwarf cuts out clots of dark blood. I'm the priest of Thorag. Have been searching this ancient outpost. Found it, it seems. He tries to laugh, but instead bursts into a new fit of coughs. Come closer. With an immense effort, he raises his hand and whispers words of blessing, so sweet and kind comparing to his prior curses. This last effort seems to be too much for the dying dwarf. Having finished, he drops his limp hand, draws one last breath, and falls silent. So it's actually very cool. <clears throat> if you are good to him and if you try to help him out, he will actually bless your party with good hope. Now, if we wanted to make this last longer, we would have rested before we got this effect. It will not actually matter for what I'm going to do in a bit, but, you know, just, just mentioning that. If you want to min-max that particular spell, you could just talk to him after resting. The room is filled with a sickening stench of carrion. And there is apparently a hidden... Oh! Bronze Dwarven Key. And Thorax Pendant. Okay. <clears throat> so, let's take care of the level-ups. I would also like to level up um, Rigongar before we rest, but I think that 1400 experience might be a bit much. Well, I can try and see how much we get for um, for a few combat encounters and decide upon that. Okay, Leopard is healed up. We can go back to our Wisdom Helmet. You would also be a nice level up. <clears throat> okay, so we still have all of our long duration buffs. Uh, I think we still have some hastes. Yeah, okay. Well, let's, let's keep going a bit. See if we can get some more experience before we actually rest. A kobold... Oh. Oh. A kobold artist. An odd kobold sits in front of the wall. His scales, snout and especially hands are covered with something akin to a blend of tar and what seems to be rancid mud-colored filth. Occasionally, the kobold plunges his hand into the clay pot nestled beside him, grabs a handful of paint and slowly smears it on the wall. It's actually a very cool painting of kobold with the speed and the shield. Judging by the odor, I can, I can tell exactly what the main ingredient in this paint is. Oh god. <clears throat> the unintelligible smears gradually resolve into a crude drawing of a huge kobold striking a heroic pose. There are many smaller figures around him, but you can't tell who they might be. The kobold continues with his strokes. He doesn't seem to have noticed you, or perhaps he's just too lost in his work. What is that? Fine art as performed by kobolds? Valerie wrinkles her nose in disgust. In the Order of Shell, and I was taught that all art is precious. But what would my mentors say were they, to, were they here to see this? <clears throat> Can you hear me? The kobold continues his strange state that seems to be somewhere between deep meditation and a trance. He raises his paint-smeared hands to the wall, makes a small and deliberate stroke, then steps back to examine his creation as a whole. Hey, can you hear me? The kobold slowly turns to you. You can't read the expression on his snout, but he certainly doesn't seem pleased. Shribariza Kasla Dar Tartuk. The kobold points toward his painting. Tartuk! He repeats before turning away. This Tartuk again! It's like he's everywhere! I'm sick of hearing that name! I feel I'm developing a conditioned response. Every time I hear Tartuk, I feel the need to vomit. Uh, can you tell me more about Tartuk? It seems the kobold has told you all he intended to. He shows no reaction to your further questions. How can I find him? Same thing. Okay. Uh, let's just be neutral. Uh, this one doesn't seem aggressive. Let's just leave him be. And we can ignore him. And what can we find in here? Uh, uh, wait, wait. This is locked. Oh, more stuff. Alright. I am yours to command. God. Nya, nya, nya. You can thank me Good. <laughs> Good. Wait, didn't I forget to... I think I forgot to lock chest somewhere. Damn it, I think I did. Uh, 
I don't remember where though. That sucks. Okay, there's a Cobalt Sentinel there. I'm simply going to buff us up with haste. Just to make this go a little bit smoother. We have Good Hope as well, helping us out. Now, I think there is some kind of perception check to be done around here. I may have failed it. Oh, come on. Nobody can get past the doggy. Okay, we have a couple of trolls here. Branded trolls. Okay, so sing. But yeah, I feel like... It's either here or there. Because there's an item over here that I really want. This is experience. 49,700. 497. 497. 497. 497. 497. Don't hesitate. 497. I don't want Rigongar to charge because it doesn't have enlarge. Let's just attack normally. 497. And who am I kidding? I might as well just use this as well. 497. Okay, this guy just went down. This guy is disabled. This guy is not disabled. Okay, so you can focus on this one. Okay, good. Okay, so 497 goes up to 499. Yeah, realistically, it's... Eh, maybe. <clears throat> Let me try and see how many enemies I can find and if I can level up. Okay, maybe it's over here. This seems to be locked, so take that. Buff up Mr. Jubilost. Good. Good. Oh, come on, give me the item. You can thank me now. Give me the item. Yes! So. This, I think, is like the best item or the best weapon you can get for a Kundayo. Or for an archer, for that matter. Which is the Devourer of Metal. <clears throat> this is a composite longbow. And let's actually just compare them here. Uh, can I... Uh, like this. Uh, but like this, I cannot actually point to what I'm talking about. In any case, <clears throat> we can just look at the damage right now. We are comparing the Lucky Longbow and the Devourer of Metal. Both are composite longbows. The Lucky Longbow deals between 2 to 9 damage. And the Devourer of Metal deals between 5 and 25. Now, the Lucky Longbow does have a critical hit multiplier of times 4. While Devourer of Metal is only times 3. That's not going to make much of a difference. <clears throat> so the reason why this is really good is... It's a plus one weapon, so it's, you know, naturally good. More attack bonus, more damage. Uh, but it has greater corrosive, which means that the weapon deals an extra 2d6 points of acid damage on a successful hit. This is very good by itself, and it's even better against trolls. And it is also oversized. This weapon is exceptionally large and deals more damage, but attacks with it suffer a penalty of minus two to attack rolls. That's something to keep in mind. So, if you look here... This one deals 2d6 piercing damage, while this one deals 1d8. So it's not exactly double damage, but it is quite significant increase of damage. We also picked up a Frost Grade Sword. It's not better than what we have in terms of our axe. So I'm just going to keep the axe. And I should actually be using something other than fire, because trolls are resistant to fire. Let's go for cold. Yeah. Uh, so, essentially, I'm going to give Devourer of Metal to Ikundayo. We are going to see this drop, naturally, but the damage goes up by quite a bit. And Cordampina, she has the Savage Bow. I am going to give her the Lucky Longbow. There you go. 
Now, let's see who else we can find to try and get some experience here. This will be for a puzzle that I don't know from memory. I will have to actually check the, um, the puzzle area before I can come back here and, and adjust that puzzle. I believe the solution is always the same, so if you know it from memory, you can just change the position without having to go back and forth. Okay, here we have some troll hounds. I think I'm not... I'm not gonna charge in, because there might be traps here. And I don't want to charge into a trap. Let's keep Rigong in a safe position. Okay. Kundayo dealing some very decent damage. Oh, nice. What do you have? Oh, it's locked as well. My Wait. Time has come. I am yours to command. You require my assistance? Uh, okay. A portion of heroism. We did pick up a key. I'll have to check if the key opens up this door. I don't remember. Ah, yes. Th this is why I, I'm not charging in as usual. Because I, I feel like there are traps around here. Child's play. Okay, let's, let's just not charge. We don't need charge anyway, so... Rigonga is... Uh, Valerie, just fight over there. And I am kind of fearful about this troll. Let's shoot him. <laughs> He's aiming at my doggy. And my doggy is getting very low in HP. Uh, Cordon Pina, come over here. Heal! Doggy, no! No! Wait. Okay, he went down, but we actually got him up. <laughs> He lives still! Don't let him die! Mr. Doggy! He lives, he lives. It's fine, it's fine. He lives with very low HP, but I'm gonna try and heal him a little bit more here. Okay, 12. 10. 12. And 8. Okay. <clears throat> How are we looking on the uh, experience department? Okay, 750 to go. Shouldn't be too much. Mm, okay, yeah, okay. So Rigongar is in an unfortunate position. Let's try and make sure he doesn't die. Oh, he's actually... Okay, he's aiming at the leopard. It looked like, like he was going to aim at... At Rigongar, but he didn't. Okay, Valerie took a hit. And he went down. So yeah, basically what we have right now is that my main character is casting Acid Shot. Uh, Ekundayo has Acid on his weapon. And Rigongar also has Acid on his weapon. So we have a lot of different sources to actually turn off the regeneration of the trolls and also, you know, be able to finish them off. Which is very good. Very nice heal. Stop. So, any brilliant ideas? We are getting closer and closer to leveling up. Oh, okay, needs key. Alright. Focus on the goal. This team has been doing well, I feel. I'm proud of them. Hmm, no traps, really? This is locked. Yes. Together we stand. My skills are getting rusty. Okay. I'm getting confused. I can see <clears throat> my Does lock picking not give experience at all in Kingmaker? Is it just on Wrath of the Righteous? 
Is it on neither of them? Is it only on Baldur's Gate? <laughs> I don't remember. Okay, so now we have the key to open this. Good. We can see the rest of the the world over there. It's quite cool. I do love the, the setting of this game. You can thank me now. The graphics, the areas. It's very well done. And I will say again, like I said the previous episode, I, I love this dungeon. It's really cool. It's very well made. I like the, the glow of the fire in the darkness of this dwarven dungeon. It's just very, very good. Well, maybe I'm biased because I like dwarven architecture and whatnot, but... Yeah, it, it does make me happy. Trollhounds and a kobold that's trapped, so we gotta be careful about that one. More trollhounds coming. Let's make sure they all lose their regeneration with an acid bomb. And let's make sure we're safe, because if I want to disable that trap... I will need to move in with Mr. Jubilost. Disabled, disabled, disabled. Actually not disabled. Okay. So Juby, uh, let's just take care of that. That guy is coming in. Okay, he's disabled, he's disabled. Yeah, okay. So I don't need to fear the fact that Rigongar is actually in a... Uh, not very good position. I'm gonna use hold person Because otherwise they may start running into the enemies and crossing the trap Just want to make sure they stand still It's no longer needed And uh, And you know again, this is just another example of why Stinking cloud is such a such a big game changer in terms of control spells in this game. It's just so good. Okay. Focus on the goal. It's also why even if I'm playing with an offensive caster character, like for example my main character, I will still very likely give them um, spell focus and conjuration, just for the fact that they have stinking cloud. Nagrundi, you are a name troll, my friend. Did not remember you. 28 AC. Where to now? Do you matter? Probably not. I will not falter. Let's use bless. Let's get a haste, Unrest. in case this guy is a little bit tougher than he seems. And we murder. Will they ever learn? Come on, give me a lot of experience so we can level up. Pew! Okay, my leopard is reaching a low amount of HP, that's why the game auto paused. <laughs> he died. Level up, level up, level up! Damn it. 600? That's a lot. Ah, oh, man, we're almost there. 150. Are you seriously gonna tell me there's no other source of XP in this region? I will be sad. There are many rooms. Yeah, I don't think I can get any more experience up here. We're gonna have to go down. It's fine. I do believe it is fine. Uh, I'm simply going to go over here because I want to check if the key that we picked up will actually open up this door. And yeah, I'm invested, so I'm going to keep going. Any fun to be had. Um, until I can level up both Rigongar and... Nice. Both Rigongar and um, Cordampina. And once I do, I'm going to level up the entire party and we're going to rest. That will mean new spells for everybody memorized and everybody is well rested to continue. Okay, I still have haste yeah, for 10 seconds. It won't matter. Okay. Let's go to the lower levels uh, <coughs> while I stretch. Okay. 
This is not the way Needs a key. Needs a key. We need to try oh, can I just not... Okay. I had forgotten about this. Apparently we have to go through the other side first. Okay. Okay. Really didn't think so, but... I was clearly wrong. Okay, let's go over there. Are you running? Not really. Now they're running. Come on, people. Move. Yeah, but th this will be one of the places you want to visit with Harem. This statue right here. And the other one is right at the end of the, the entire dungeon. Four minutes and thirty. Okay. There is also a nice suit of armor in this dungeon, <clears throat> but I can't actually use it with any of my characters because it's alignment based. It would make a lot of sense for um, Valerie, but alas, she is lawful neutral, not lawful good. Uh, okay, so just go. My leopard is low, right? I kind of forgot about that, but it shouldn't be too much of an issue. He gained initiative, so I don't think they're going to be able to hit him. There should be a trap. Or jewelry. Okay. Now, I want to make sure that I don't go into any particularly dangerous rooms. I'm not sure if there are any, you know, besides the actual final section of the dungeon. Although this one, I think, is a little bit iffy. But we have stinking clouds, so we should be fine. Jazz on. I will just heal our party before we commit. Oh, look, she's... She, okay, we're gonna level up here. Nice. Very nice, my friends. Let us not hesitate. Let's get a protection from fire, just in case. Okay. You are fine. I will get a remove fear. Can you cast this with your armor? No. Try again. Yeah. Uh, let's sing. Move in. You see a troll who looks familiar. He was the one who greeted you at the lair's entrance. Ah, right. You believe his name was Jason. Jason? Maybe. He and some other trolls are surrounded by the gang of kobolds. Noticing you, Jason turns and bares his teeth. Borba came already. You like fight you like killing troll and cobalt, Borba. Now Jason kill you. His muscles bulge under his thick pelt and his eyes are dark with anger. Yeah, man, lawful good. You've killed many people, plundered many villages, and now you have to answer for your crimes. If Borba killed Borba, you punish him. You not kill his whole family. The troll looks at you and snarls with contempt. We kill you now, Borba, but we no beasts anymore. We no eat your corpse. We bury you in we bury it someplace. Let other Borba come to that place. Cobalt, run! Trolls, dur Borba. The trolls roar loudly, so loudly dust falls from the ceiling. Several kobolds heed Jason and run, but the rest gather beside the trolls. The Cobalt Spark Shaman, a withered cobalt clad in a stained rug, steps forward. Men, Tartuk, menace, he hisses. Tartuk, kobolds, peace, 
Men's deaths. I love them. I love them so much. Yeah, so these guys like to cast Ray of Fire. Which is one of the reasons why we buffed up with protection from fire. Although I don't expect too much trouble out of them. Uh, main character will cast a Stinking Cloud over there. Mr. Leopard will start biting on that troll. You the same thing. Rigonga the same thing. And... You guys can start shooting that one. My doggy will focus on this archer here. Okay, wait, hey, somebody joined the fight? Ah, people over there, okay. Okay, let me see if this position is still good. Or if I want to bring it back a little bit. Uh, rock throwers are tossing things at the leopard. That seems fine. So I think we're good. Okay, critical hit. Disabled, disabled, disabled. Both of these are not disabled. <clears throat> I don't want to risk anything just as we are about to have a rest. Let's toss onto the stingy cloud. You keep on pumping acid bombs. And Cordon Pina, you can move up a bit to spread out the Archon's aura if you still have it. I don't think she does. And my Leopard, I think, is going to go down. Yeah. Let's see if we can stun with the Sound Burst here. Okay. Disabled. Okay, everybody here is disabled now, so this fight is won. There's no other danger here. Doggy, charge that guy. This fight is over. Uh, all of you go over there. My backline will kill the shaman. Dead. And you can see, like, every time the Jubilos tosses a bomb, it's gonna be effective. Okay, great. Everybody has leveled up. Let me just pick up the loots here. I don't think there's anything special. I'm just gonna check this armor piece. Plus three. Not bad. But it's medium armor. We have better. A hidden room. An ancient rune is carved into the stone wall, gleaming with a bluish light. Deep, deep scratches mar its surface, and it's partially covered in mud. The trolls seem to have made quite an effort to get rid of it. Beside this rune are the outlines of two other runes, barely visible, almost destroyed by the ravages of trolls and time. <laughs> now, I believe that this doesn't even matter for anything. Uh, the only thing here is this hidden door, which I think you can discover regardless of this little thingy. I can see okay, my destination. so I already know what I'm going to give to Valerie, Ekundayo, and my main character. I will check for the other three while I pause the video. When I come back, we're going to level up every single one of our characters. Be right back. Okay, <clears throat> I am back. So these level ups are actually quite simple because we don't have to pick a feat. <laughs> it helps out a lot. Valerie keeps progressing in her bard levels. We're gonna get an additional point into Inspire Competence, making it a little bit better. And we also have Bardic Performance Move Action. This means we can start singing as a move action instead of a standard action, which is quite cool. Uh, we're gonna get an additional point into Strength. And we are going to put our point... I still don't really know what I want to give her, <laughs> to be quite honest. Uh, I think I'll just give her something like Athletics and Mobility here. And the reason why I do that, by the way... I could also give her some points in Nature, I don't think I need it. Uh, the reason why I do this... Is because there are certain spells in the game... That will force Mobility checks. I'm not sure if Athletics as well, but in any case... Spells like Pits... Uh, they can make your characters uh, fall in and the way you come out is by using mobility checks and or athletics. I can actually check this out. Okay, wait, let me see if I can check this here first. 
I'm going to level up my main character then. Arcane Trickster, the usual. More points into Charisma. And for him, I'm going to keep giving him Persuasion. Um, and I think I'm going to give him... Well, kind of the same logic here, right? Let me see if I can find what I'm looking for. So, Stinking Cloud will still be my, my upcast here. Level 1 spell, I will take True Strike. Level 2, I will take Scorching Ray. I might start using this. Uh, 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 let me just see if there's anything else I might want. I don't think so. And level 3, I can look for what I'm talking about. The Spiked Pit. So you create something, blah, blah, blah. Anybody standing in it must make a reflex saving throw or fall in. Uh, uh, uh. Creatures who fall into the pit take falling damage. Plus, to climb out of the pit's core stone walls, a creature needs a successful athletics or mobility skill check with a DC of 25. Yeah. So, <clears throat> if your characters don't have any of this, it means it's very much impossible for them to climb out of these pits. And there will be some particularly nasty characters in the game that like to cast these spells. And if it lands on your backline, and if they don't have a lot of mobility or athletics, they might just be dead. You won't be able to save them at all. In any case, looking at what we have here. <clears throat> Slow is a very good spell, but I don't have any kind of focus on transmutation. I don't think I'm going to bother too much with that one. I believe I'm going to take uh, haste as well because we have a lot of level 3 spells and at times I might not be wanting to use Thinking Cloud, I can support my party with haste. Uh, I could also go for Fireball, although I plan on using the controlled version of Fireball at level 4 more than this one, so we can leave that one for later. And this will be my level up here. So yeah, we looked over the pit spell. Which means putting some points in mobility and or athletics seems like a good choice. I don't think I need to put in both of them. So might as well just put it in mobility. It's also good for using the, um, the ability to avoid the tax of opportunity. Let me see if I want this anything anywhere else. Uh, I could put one point into perception because why not? Okay. <clears throat> So we get another level of, in, well, sorry, the, the first level of impromptu sneak attack. And what this is, is beginning at third level, an arcane trickster can enter a special stance that allows him to improvise a way to sneak attack targets regardless of their awareness. An arcane trickster can maintain this stance for one round per day. For every two levels beyond third, an arcane trickster can maintain this stance for one additional round, up to a maximum of four rounds at ninth level. Uh, do pay attention that when they say level, they mean Arcane Trickster level, not your overall level. The target of impromptu sneak attacks loses any dexterity bonus to AC, but only against those attacks. The power can be used against any target, but creatures that are not subject to sneak attacks take no extra damage. Though they still lose any dexterity bonus to AC against the attack. What this means is, you can bypass the AC of certain powerful enemies, and you can also deal sneak attack damage regardless of if they are flanked or prompt up to sneak attacks by any other mean. This just guarantees a sneak attack. You don't have a lot, right? You have at maximum four rounds, but it, it can be quite useful. So yeah, level three arcane tricks that we get in prompt to sneak attack. I'm going to take Scorching Ray for my level two spell. Wait, why is my... Ah, because I already had on Alchemist, okay. But I want True Strike on my Sorcerer Spell list as well. Complete. So, going back to Valerie, like I was doing here, Bard, Strength, and Perception, and I think I'm just going to pump up both of these. Yeah. I think it sounds good. Now, we're going to get some more Bard spells. For level 1, I guess I'm going to take Vanish. <clears throat> the reason why I'm taking Vanish, by the way, is because there's really not a whole lot else that I would still want. I don't really want stuff that causes or that, that can be saved against. 
I don't want Feather Step because we're gonna get Feather Step Mass. And the other spell we're gonna take here is Good Hope. So the same thing that our friend the Dwarf gave us, we can get out of our Bard as well. This is a very good spell. What this does is, all allies within a 15-foot burst centered on target creature within medium range. It lasts 1 minute per level, so it's going to be a medium duration buff. This spell instills powerful hope in the subjects. Each affected creature gains a plus 2 morale bonus on saving throws, attack rolls, ability checks, skill checks and weapon damage rolls. Good hope dispels crushing despair. <laughs> a very good spell. And we're also going to take Feather Step Mass. Uh, we could also take haste, but I think we already have enough haste casters in the um, in the party. We will be taking this placement at some point to protect Valerie or another character, and those will be the main spells. There we go. The only thing I want to compare here, I because I always forget about the differences, is what does heroism do that Good Hope does not. So, Heroism is morale bonus on attack rolls, saves and skill checks. And Good Hope is saving throws, attack rolls, ability checks, skill checks and weapon damage rolls. So, it's just better, right? Or am I, or am I missing something? This one lasts longer, but single target. Okay, so morale bonus on attack rolls, saves and skill. Attack rolls, saves, skill... Weapon damage, ability checks. Okay. So, I think we're pretty much done with heroism then. Let me look at something here. Heroism. We're casting them on those two. Delete. Uh. Where is the save button? Here. <laughs> and now, on medium duration, we will want to add a new spell. The caster will be Valerie. The spell will be... Come on, mod. It might be because it's not memorized yet, or not... Give the order. She doesn't have it ready yet, I would imagine. Okay. <clears throat> so for Rigonger, like I said, we leveled up to level 7 in the Magus um, skill tree. Uh, we got Arcane Medium Armor, which is a good source of more AC for him. And we could still keep going in the Magus levels and keep him a pure Magus. It would still be a very powerful character. I do prefer, however, to go for Dragon Disciple. The reason for it is we're going to put four levels into Dragon Disciple. The reasons for it being, and I'm sure I might have mentioned this before, but I'll go into some more detail here. On level one, we get an additional point to AC. It stacks with everything else. So very good source of AC. We get Grow Claws. We don't care about this. We get Draconic Bloodline Arcana Blue. This is the same thing we have on our, um, on our main character. Although ours is for fire. Which means every spell that Rigongar casts that deals lightning damage will deal one additional point of damage per die rolled. It may come into play here and there. We also have Class Skill Perception. Additional class skill for Draconic, from Draconic Bloodline. <laughs> Nothing very special. A good level up. On level 2, we get an increase to our strength of plus 2. Very, very nice. So, an additional attack bonus, an additional point of damage, and also athletics, I believe. Arcane spell casting. We can also get some spells out of this. And Dragon Bite. So, at second level, Dragon Disciples gain a Bite attack. This is a primary natural attack that deals 1d6 points of damage, plus 1 minus half times the Dragon's Disciple's Strength modifier. Upon reaching 6th level, this bite also deals more damage, but we won't be reaching 6th level. But essentially what this second level up does is, plus 2 to Strength, spell casting, and a free bite attack to our round of attacks. Very good level as well. On level 3, we gain Dragon Resistances, we gain Mage Armor, we already have it, so it's irrelevant. And we get a Breath Weapon, basically just a, a, a line Lightning Bolt, basically. And at level 4, we get an additional point of AC that stacks with everything else, and again, two extra Strength Points. So, these four levels 
are going to give us plus 2 AC, plus 4 strength, a free bite attack, spell casting, and dragon resistances. Well, and also the breath weapon if we count it. Oh, and yeah, the, the bloodline arcana extra damage. This means we cannot get 20 levels in the Magus class, but I think overall what we get here is going to help us out even more so in the mid game, and it's going to be good all the way up until the end game. So Dragon Disciple is my choice right here, and will also be my choice for the following three levels. We're going to keep on pumping athletics on him, and other than that, I guess he can take like... This, this won't matter, because Jubilost will take over this skill. And, I don't know, man. Magic device? In case we want to use some wands on him. I should use them more. Like lead blades. I don't usually use them, but I should. Perception is also not too bad, but... Let's just go like this. It's fine. The, the main take out of this here is athletics, honestly. Natural armor plus one. Awesome. Mr. Kundayo, we're going to give him the second level in Magus. So now we have Ranged Spell Strike. We're going to give him more Dexterity. We're going to give him these uh, three. Mm -hmm. And over here, honestly, it doesn't matter because we won't use anything from the spell list besides True Strike. If we even use True Strike. So, sure, you can take, like, what, Magic Missile and Shield. Again, it doesn't really matter. Okay. I will do this right now before I forget. We have Spell Strike on. We're also going to have Spell Combat on to be able to cast a cantrip and also continue using our normal shots. And what we do for this purpose is quite simply, we just right-click this, and just make sure it's always on. It's going to mean that we're going to be having an additional attack every single round. For basically free. Cordon Pin is going to be a very easy but very very important level up. We're going to get level 8. We're going to continue pumping up Wisdom. The usual skill checks. And what we're going to be getting here is Guarded Earth. So this is one of the reasons... Or this is basically one of the main reasons why we pick a cleric of Erastil. So, the main reason, or the first reason, is that we get an animal companion at level 4. Okay, so very, very important reason. <clears throat> but then at level 8, we get this. And what this does is, this is a spell that you cast into a specific point. It lasts one hour per level, so you don't have to worry about duration. It takes a full round to cast, so it, it does take a long time to cast, but usually, if you expect a tough fight, you will use this beforehand. The radius is huge. And, you know, if you find yourself in need of extra assistance, you may also cast this, you know, mid-combat. It takes a round, but whatever. What does this do? At 8 level, you can create a ward that protects a specified area. Creating this ward is a full round action. All friendly creatures in the area receive a sacred bonus equal to your wisdom modifier on all saving throws and attack rolls while inside the warded area. So, essentially, we cast this in an area when we expect a tough fight, and everybody inside that area will receive a plus 6 to attack bonus and a plus 6 to um, saving throws. Now, naturally, this plus 6 will increase over time. When we get better helmets for her, uh, if we get some buffs for her, as we naturally develop her wisdom saving... Um, sorry. Her wisdom score, it will just keep on making this a better and better ability. Very, very important. It will be very useful for us. And finally, we look at Mr. Jubilost here. And we don't get a feat, but we do get um, a discovery, an alchemical discovery. And we get access to some very cool things. So there's a lot that you can pick on the alchemist and it's, it's rarely a wrong choice. You have blinding bombs. You can make people blind with these bombs. You have choking bomb, which can nauseate creatures hit by it. You have dispelling bombs, which, you know, dispel. Um, explosive bombs for more fire damage. Fast bombs, you can shoot two bombs instead of one. Or just more bombs, right? 
throw additional bombs as a full round action, yeah. You have force bombs, which can knock people prone. You have holy bombs, which are very hard to resist. <laughs> it's, it's actually a very important thing for a, a boss enemy that we may take on right at the end of the game. We'll see about that. And you also have tangle foot bombs to make people harder to move around in the area. Naturally, you cannot pick all of these things because there are going to be other things you want to take. Like, for example, fast bombs later on. Uh, the one I like taking here is force bombs. Let's just look at it. When the alchemist creates a bomb, he can choose to have it inflict force damage, which is hard to resist, by the way. Force bombs deal 1d4 points of force damage, plus 1d4 points of force damage for every odd numbered level instead of 1d6. Right, because the fire bombs deal 1d6, this one only deals 1d4. However, creatures that take a direct hit from a force bomb are knocked prone unless they succeed at a reflex save. And, as we know, knocking enemies prone is very, very strong, because they will lose AC against your melee combatants, and when they get back up, they trigger attacks of opportunity, which is going to be massive. The other very strong choice on this level is going to be Choking Bomb. So let's just read this one as well. Uh, instead of dealing damage, this bomb exposes creatures around it to Choking Gas. Creatures that take a direct hit or are in the splash area must succeed to fort to save or become nauseated for one round per 1d6 damage the alchemist bomb would usually inflict. Okay, so nauseating is extremely strong as we've seen from our um, stinking cloud uh, spell. But that's actually the reason why I don't pick choking bomb. I typically have someone casting stinking cloud this one does the same thing, so instead of taking another effect that does the same thing and targets the same save as Fortitude, I'm going to be taking instead this one, which still deals damage, deals a type of damage that is hard to resist, it targets a different saving throw, in which it's reflex save, and it can knock people prone. Very, very strong force bombs. I love this one. We're going to keep on pumping intelligence, and also very cool, we go up from 5 points to 9 points on this level up. So we can do our usual buffing here. Well, not buffing, the, the increases, I guess. And now I can even make this guy our Knowledge Arcana expert. And actually, I'm also going to give him a point in mobility here. Just for the same reasons as before. Try and make sure he doesn't die in a pit somewhere. As for our spells, we're going to have another level 3 spell to choose from. You can choose whatever kind of level you want. Since he learns spells from scrolls, you don't really need to bother too much with this. Um, but I think I'm going to be taking... Well... Eh, probably nothing really matters besides these three. I guess I'll take... Uh, resist... I'll take Torn Body. Since all the other things here are easy to pick up from scrolls, let's take it. it. It might come in handy at some time in the future. Right, so that's done. We're going to go over our spells here. This guy can't even cast anything because he's too dumb. <laughs> Cordampina will take an additional level 3 spell. So I think for this I could either go for an additional prayer. I could go for a magical vestment. But I think this is not really going to make much of a difference, to be honest. It's a plus one in enhancement for uh, per four levels. And it does not stack with the item's enhancement. So it's not really going to do much. I think I will just go for Animate Dead. It can be useful in a pinch. And for level four, do I want anything else... I can take one Divine Power if I want to have fun dealing some damage. This is not the safest option. The safest option would be probably Restoration or Death Ward. I'll take this for fun. And finally, you have the same stuff here. Ooh, that's a big increase. I don't think I need Bark Skill on, anything el on anyone else. So I think I will take Cat's Grace here. 
And an additional haste. Or I'll take a displacement. I'll take a displacement. Okay. <laughs> That's our level ups. Those are our spells. We are gonna have a rest. Hopefully I'm not forgetting anything. Ah, right, yeah. So we cannot hunt here. This is why we have our rations. We can take you out of this position because it doesn't do anything. Uh, we also cannot cook. Yes. So you can go over there. And you can... Go over there. Okay, let's rest. Don't detract from. I... No ambush, please. Yippee. Um, you mind. have your thing. Don't you have your thing. For you don't have any new spells. I will see this through. I'm just putting my spells here, otherwise I'm gonna forget about them. Does anyone require my Quiet, I'm thinking. Okay. Keep your wits about you. Offensive. Eh, go over there. These two go well together when we get some quicken rods. And I, I think that's all I want, right? Where to now? Oh, you are missing a spell here. Take these two. Meow, meow, I know, I know. Stop meowing. Resist energy doesn't seem like it's gonna matter too much, but sure. And we also get the spell magic from our bloodline. Which we will likely not use, but... Okay. <clears throat> Focus Seems good. Let's remove our armor from... Miss Valerie. Yes. I think we're done. <laughs> Protection from arrows. Drink that. I will not falter. I think all of our spells for long duration are properly applied. Now, the one thing I wanted to change was... Let me see if I can do this again. Um, how do I... Cancel. So, new spell. Caster is Valerie. Aha! Level 3 spell, I want good hope. And the target can be herself. Okay, it's an AoE ability, so it's fine. Okay, finish that. Save the queue. So now when we get medium duration, we're also gonna cast good hope. I think I deleted heroism. I did. My skills are getting rusty. Ah, and Cat's Grace. Who would want Cat's Grace? Uh, Valerie, I don't think needs it. Five max dexterity. This guy wants it. Although it's a little bit of an increase with the with the belt of physical protect uh, perfection. Same thing for this guy. Okay, so let me adjust that. Okay, so you can save this queue, medium duration, new spell, caster is Juby, spell is Cat's Grace, target is character name Rigongar and Ekundayo. Or, 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 actually, 
Let's go for the pets because the pets don't get any other buffs of this of this type. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So finish this and save the queue and save. Okay. So yeah. Well, it did take a little bit of time doing the level ups. It usually does, and I I always underestimate the time it takes. But I, I do think it's important to show the thought process and what I'm doing here, also with the mod. Um, I was hoping to explore more of this in this episode, but it's going to be for the next one. Uh, we're, it's going very well, I feel. Taking care of the troll lair depths. Uh, we're advancing just fine. Everybody's leveled up. Oh, before I forget. I want this in a visible spot. Um, so I can take this away from here and do this. Okay, very important. Um, so yeah. This will be it for this episode, my friends. As always, thank you so much for being here with me in the channel, watching some Pathfinder Kingmaker. Uh, questions, suggestions, if you just want to say hi, leave a comment below. If you are enjoying the content, consider subscribing for more. Many more videos coming out soon, and I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe, everyone.